Many students have a very good understanding of math, but less than 30 people who are currently in school in Moldova won places in international Olympiads at this subject. What exactly differentiates a student who's good in school from one who has multiple places internationally? We're going to discover together what are the most important factors for achieving success in competitive maths or in our STEM subjects. Let's start with the beginning. I like Olympiads because they instigate curiosity. The most beautiful parts of maths are the ideas and motivations behind every solution. At first sight, a problem with a two-page solution, full of equations, applied formulas, and hard-to-remember theorems might look boring and hard to follow, even for me. But the secret is asking yourself, why were those steps taken? Why did the person who solved it choose that particular method? There's a trick with every problem, a sort of light bulb moment that is the crucial part in problem solving. It's when the proof starts to make sense and all the work afterwards is just applying that idea and putting it in writing. This is what the problems in contests are all about and why so many are fascinated by STEM. But in order to see math in such a different way, you have to be passionate about it. Only a strong desire and motivation can make hours feel like minutes and replace tiredness with the intriguing search for a beautiful solution. In my most recent international contest, the European Girls Math Olympiad, EGMO for short, we had two days of competition, each with three problems, and we were given four and a half hours each day. Even though the tasks were extremely difficult, you never got bored in those nine hours. You were always engaged in solving the problem or making as much progress as you could. The next idea is about involvement. Good results don't come as easy as you might think. I had four years of daily training and tens of participations to local and national contests before qualifying for my first international Olympiad. I try to work consistently, even if I don't have any competitions for the next few months. In that way, it becomes a habit to work every day and little by little, your skills are developing. With experience, you learn how to think about the problem for hours without getting bored, and how to come up with new ideas when stuck. You discover new topics and fortify your knowledge by applying them in problems. Even though the contest problems will always be new from the ones you've already solved, you will have a certain level of intuition that will guide you through the process. Usually when I compete and read the problems, I have a few possible approaches for a solution. Intuitive thinking helps me choose the most probable idea, and most of the time it is the right one. This makes a huge difference when you only have a few hours to do your best. Another question to you is, how many times have you been in a situation where your emotions got the better of you? For me, it's the first minutes of every Olympiad. Being pressed by the time can be pretty stressful, especially when you rely on your mind to be relaxed, sharp, and creative. Learning to control your emotions is as important as the training and problem solving, though it is harder to prepare for it in advance. For me, it was something I learned from past experiences. My first international contest, the Junior Balkan Math Olympiad, didn't go quite as I expected. The minute the contest started, I felt very distracted and lost. I spent the first 30 minutes proving a formula I already knew was correct, but wanted to double check. And the thing is, that formula could have been proven in five minutes. The emotions combined with the weight of the first major Olympiad made me forget my strategy and my way to concentrate. But that first experience developed me so the following years, under stressful situations, I managed to fully dedicate myself and be in the moment when doing what I love. I fully understood the importance of emotion management. Last year when EGMO happened online, because the event is usually in April, we weren't given much time to adapt to the new circumstances. We wrote the contest from home 
and it put a lot more responsibility on us. In normal conditions, you have responsible people that deal with everything related to the organization. So we don't have to worry and can focus on the tasks. But this edition, we had to do both the contest and organization parts. We had to follow additional rules and had to make sure that everything would go according to plan. And on top of all that, you knew that the minute the clock started, you have to concentrate on the problems and write as well as possible. We managed, and it turned out fine, though it may have had a very different outcome, which leads me to the next point. Before a contest, each participant has some expectations and sets some goals. What happens when it doesn't go as planned? When the result is worse than expected? What does it mean and what can be done? The answer, a single participation does not define all the work you put in the process and your overall skill. Many circumstances can influence it and you shouldn't let yourself down because of that. On the contrary, make it a reason to work harder and deal with your weak points. I've also had a fair share of situations like that, but I still went back to work and study more because ultimately it was my passion and I like what I do. The last point is probably the most wholesome. It's about friendships and friendly competitions. Because this is a highly competitive environment, there inevitably are gonna be feelings of jealousy towards our participants. But those are minimal. Actually, the most wonderful thing that comes out of Olympiads are the relationships made with the other participants. Think about it. You compete with tens of people on a national level, and then you and a few of your opponents go to an international Olympiad, where you compete as a team against a few hundreds, everyone trying to solve the same six problems. In that moment, you realize that the real competition is with the problems, not with the participants. And you should focus on doing your best rather than someone else doing worse compared to you. I actually study in the same class with 10 people with whom I participate at the same Olympiads. And before a contest, even though we want ourselves to do good, we genuinely want the others to do their best too. It is wonderful when you have people around you as emotionally invested in the subject as you with whom you can consult, work together, and get better together. It is overall a better experience. Even if you can't build those kind of relationships with your peers locally, there is a vast international community where people share problems, knowledge, and advice with others, and you are always welcome to be a part of it. I hope that you could take something useful out of this. If you're really passionate about the subject, I encourage you to pursue it not limit yourself to the boundaries of schoolwork or any other boundaries. Do your best and control your feelings before they control you. Thank you for, so much for listening. Have a great day.